it's virgin. <laughs> I'm looking at my contrived uh, hummingbird feeder, hoping that it's dirty enough to stay and not get knocked over if a hummingbird come on it. Which, it looks like it'll stay. We'll see. Which is a blessing to me today because God gave me back, you know, there are different times that it's either too hot or too cold or whatever it may be, but my hummingbird tends to show up usually every day if I kind of wear it out of the corner of my eye because off camera I sit over here at a computer and out of the corner of my eye as I'm working on the internet I see him you know and he visits these flowers that you can see here and some flowers up here you can't see and it doesn't really stay very long but just enough that I can see him and it's just a blessing that God sends to me because at different times in my life God has sent birds <laughs> figures bird brain bird me you know into my life and he's used it in some ways as the Holy Spirit to guide me in some ways to just be there at the same time for a instruction or a construction of somehow the circumstances being such as they are that the Lord used it anyways but it's just my way of little idiosyncrasies between God and I that we both enjoy and I participate with him in it in the fact that he gets my attention and I'm directed towards him not towards a bird. <laughs> it's just a bird. <laughs> Come on, let's get real. But towards God, because he used the circumstance to direct me to him. You know, and circumstances such as they are, you know, today I needed the bird because there was a person that was participating in some thing on the internet and the name of it was about some church and they seemed to you know be going against everything that everybody was part was posting and I kept thinking well that's odd why would someone be constantly attacking every single person that was posting something that was positive positive?" and then I realized that person doesn't believe in what the page said it was and so I spent some time developing and commenting and finding the person finally admitted that you know, though they had been a part of the church that they participated in and the page, they no longer believed that, but they now were confronting everyone about it and confronting the issues that they didn't believe in anymore and constantly attacking other people. And then they said even more that they were talking to non-Christians and talking to other religions and everything else. And I thought, did you ever mention Jesus in that? And they said, yo, yeah, well, you know, 20 years ago, you know, we... I had a personal relationship like you, but now I'm, you know, this and that and the other thing. It's like, okay, why don't you just go somewhere else? I kept saying, go somewhere else to do something else, you know? Why be so confrontational that you're not communicative, but rather be communicative so that you can be conformed, not deformed, but conformed into the image of his son so that we could share in what Jesus is doing and care for each other in the way that God is developing you as well as developing me. So we don't have to agree, but we don't have to confront or attack each other in such a way that it causes a person to not share Jesus and what he is doing in their life. And I was so shocked and saddened by it that I finally had to just remove myself from the, the place in order to give the space back to God that he wants me to do with my time so that I can share and care about those people that are seeking to be encouraged, to be strengthened in their faith, but not to be, you know, beaten down with a, you know, theological axe because in my old days I would have gone after them and done a little whack attack myself. But, <laughs> but why? What difference would it make? They'd still be, at the end of the day, arguing, and the debate would just go on and on and on and on, and one day they die and find out the reason why. But the point is, today, as God is real and alive in you, if you ever lack wisdom, we're told that if any man, any man or woman or child, lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who abradeth not, but giveth to all men liberally. I can't stress that enough. It doesn't say ask your Bible. It doesn't say go to Google, though I tell people to do that all the time. It doesn't say to, you know, develop some theological thing or go to a Bible study or whatever, although those are all good. 
Those are just intellect and intelligence and knowledge, but they're not wisdom. So when God wants to apply wisdom, he takes knowledge and all those other things, but he makes it real by himself giving you wisdom through experience and application of knowledge in the differentiation of what is his will for you as opposed to what is going on around you and about you. That's what wisdom is. It's from the Holy Spirit, and only the Holy Spirit can apply it. So you have to go to God to get it. So if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who prayed not, but give it to all men liberally means you got to get it from the Holy Spirit. And God's got to give that to you and put him inside you, and then he's got to instruct you and direct you and then make it conformable to what you're going through in your experience. Got it? <laughs> so in Spurgeon, strangers are coming to the sanctuary of the Lord's house. On this account, the faces of the Lord's people were covered with shame, for it was a terrible thing that men should intrude into the holy place reserved for the priests alone. Everywhere about us we see like cause for sorrow. How many ungodly men are now educating with the view of entering into the ministry? What a crying sin is that solemn lie by which our whole population is nominally comprehended in a national church. Our fearful, how fearful is it that ordinances should be pressed upon the unconverted and that among the more enlightened churches of our land there should be such laxity of discipline. If the thousands who will read this portion shall take this matter before the Lord Jesus this day, he will interfere and avert the evil which otherwise will come upon his church. To adulterate the church is to pollute a well and to pour water upon fire, to sow a fertile field with stones. May we all have grace to maintain in our proper way the purity of the church as being an assembly of believers and not a nation, an unsaved community of unconverted men. Our zeal must, however, begin at home. Let us examine ourselves as to our right to eat at the Lord's table. Let us see to it that we have on our wedding garment, lest we ourselves be intruders in the Lord's sanctuaries. Many are called, but few are chosen. The way is narrow and the gate is straight. Oh, for grace to come to Jesus correctly with the faith of God's elect. He who smote Uzzah for touching the ark is very jealous of his two ordinances. As a true believer, I may approach them freely, but as an alien, I must not touch them lest I die. Heart searching is the duty of all who are baptized or come to the Lord's table. Search me, O God, and know my way. Try me and know my heart. In the circumstances of your day, in everything that you react to and act, all you need to do is take it to the Lord and pray, and he will show you the way that you should go. He will reveal to you whether it's a circumstance of life that he is revealing your heart so that you can give it to him and he can make it tenderized by the circumstances so you would have more love towards the person and the results that he is accomplishing in them by your response to them and his initiation in you of his development as he is bringing you through the process of sanctification that you might be made aware of how God is living in you so that it would no longer be you that lives but Jesus responding to the person through you so that you would see that you are in cooperation with God as you sit back and let him have his way in your life as you do what he says for you to you and with you today did you get it <laughs> Replay it. No, I'm kidding. But the point is, just talk to Jesus. Ah, simple, no problem. Hey, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Okay, well, we'll go that way. Okay, no, we won't, I guess. Fine, thank you, Lord, I got it. Now we'll go that way. So you see, it's just simply about what you do and how you do it with, with the Lord, not without Him. Walk with Jesus. It's so simple. <laughs>